Have you ever heard a story in the scriptures? When you read it, you said, this is just, this is nuts. Well, I'm gonna give you one of those today. Hi, this is Daryl Chesser. Thank you for tuning in today to Sea Life TV, uh, part of Sea Life Ministries. You can go to the address here on the screen at sealifeministries.org or .com, either one. And on the uh, media page there, you'll find our archives, audio, thousand sermons, probably from through the years, my dad and my mom, my sister, me, bent elders and prophets and preachers from around the country, all free. For you to listen to those are uh, mp3s or audio files and then there's also a link there to sealifetv.org which is just a video jukebox of all of the sea life ministry uh videos presented over the past uh six seven eight years uh by several of us over a hundred and some odd videos there for you to choose from teaching and encouragement a little bit of everything so sealifetv.org or sealifeministries.org or .com, either one. Today, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, there is, uh, I'm going to title this one, This is Just Nuts. Because I read a passage of scripture and I'm reading it and I'm into it and the story is fascinating. And it is about a king in Judah, Hezekiah, this is just one of the stories that's going to go along with uh, my theme today. But it's like they come back, they come to become a king, right? And they set their heart to seek the Lord. And they get everybody on board moving that direction. In other words, their church is a rockin'. They are doing the worship. They are putting in the time. They are just living it up, preaching the word and, and high-fiving and slapping and dancing and speaking in tongues, prophesying. I mean, they are restoring the kingdom. Things, things that haven't been done in decades. They are doing again, rejoicing, remembering their first love. And then, and then something happens. Let me start. This one drives me a bit mad, a, a bit nuts with, with that same principle. Hezekiah and Judah, as I said, had just finished restoring worship and uh, Passover uh, like it's not been celebrated in maybe 100 years, 200 years. And uh, they were uh, cleaning out the temple and restoring all of that to where it should have always been with the priests and with Judah. And there was great joy. There was hope. There was just a real positive, just like, man, all of this is coming together, a revival, a renaissance of the glory of God in Judah. And, and all were whole. I mean, everybody was feeling like this is what we were born for. Now we're back on track. We're moving in the right direction. The blood has been shed by the lambs and the rams and the, and the, and the, uh, the, bulls and and atonement has been made and we are clean and ready to go and then let me read to you out of uh this one's out of second chronicles and it is in um chapter 32 and i'll start with verse one because this is the this is the part all of that i've just described has been going on and then all of a sudden Chapter 32, verse 1. After all of these acts of faithfulness, not sin or rebellion, but after all of these acts of faithfulness, Shennacherib, or Sennacherib, a king of Assyria, let's just put it that way, came and invaded Jerusalem. He invaded Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, intending to break into them for himself. We just, we just had revival. We just, we just repented. We just did everything that everybody on the lines, we had a revival. We just repented. We did everything that you guys told us to do. And now this, an invading army is coming in to take our stuff. 
it seems the opposite of what should be going on. It seems to me that if you do all of these things and you're pleasing to the Lord and you're doing revival, what we're told is then everything will be great. Yeah, maybe. You'll be great. Your relationship with the Lord will be great. God will be blessing you. But we have an enemy. And that enemy is not men. Now, they'll participate in this. They'll be parts of those armies and parts of those invaders. However, the ruler, the king of that, is Satan. This enemy, that his entire job, as Jesus told us in John chapter 10, verse 10, uh, he said, the devil, the destroyer, the murderer, the devil comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The invader can't take your salvation, but he wants to come in and try to steal your hope and steal your faith and destroy your hope for any future. For like, well, look, I already, I just did what God wanted and what what I believe to be the right thing. And here I am surrounded and about to be consumed by this invading army. That drives me mad. Do you see, it's not this one, two, three, you do this, you do this, and this will happen. Yeah, but the enemy's not gonna stand by for that. In this day, in this time, in this realm that we're in, from the cross to the, res to the, uh, to the uh, coming again, we're in that day where an enemy is not gonna stand by and let you be blessed without a fight. He's going to come try to take everything. Take your health. Take your youth. Take your family. Take your country. He's trying to take everything. Anyway, just let's finish on. Let's go on in that chapter. Second Chronicles chapter 32, I think it was. <clears throat> but Hezekiah, the king that had done all of these great reforms and brought revival back, he rallied the troops and organized a defense against the mil massive military invasion that had crushed other nations uh, and now was invading Juna, uh, Judah. And he said, courage, be courage, take courage, be strong, be courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed by the king of Assyria and the whole horde that is with him. <laughs> we just don't use that word enough, horde. I like it, horde, a lot of, a bunch of, big. <laughs> For we have more with us than he has with him, Hezekiah said. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is Adonai Elihu, Elihinu, which is, yeah, him, the God who helps to help us and to fight our battles. So the people were encouraged by the words of King Hezekiah of Judah. Now, the enemy takes a shot back here, a little few verses down there. And uh, Shennacherib, who is this invader, wrote letters, or let's just say op-eds and editorial posts and social media and white papers and scientific papers and medical papers and, and, and religious papers. He wrote these wonderful papers reviling Adonai or reviling God the God of Israel, speaking against him, saying, just as the gods of the nations of the lands have not delivered their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah shall not deliver his people from my hands. Then they cried out loudly in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem. They, the enemies, started speaking Hebrew. Not Assyrian, but Hebrew. Now, let's put that into today's language. They, by they, the darkness then speaks your language. He begins to speak in your religious language. He begins to skip, speak in your scriptural language, in your faith language, to try to convince you, as even Satan used the scriptures to tempt Jesus Christ. Has not God said? Here's the scriptures. And he's saying that to the literal scriptures, the word of God, Jesus Christ. Let's go on. They're crying out in Hebrew. 
They're crying out in their language in order to capture the city. They spoke against the God of Jerusalem as of the gods of the people of the earth made by human hands. They tried to bring God down to, well, this is just your tradition. This is just another way to cope. We cope with this. We cope with that. But you, you cope with your God, your guns and your Bibles, as Mr. Obama put it. Your God, your guns, and your Bibles. Then King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed about this and cried out to heaven. And then Adonai, God, sent an angel who annihilated every mighty warrior, commander, and officer in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he withdrew in disgrace to his own land. In another part of the scriptures, in account of this story, it says that it was 100, 180,000 of their soldiers that were dead, just gone. So this bad guy withdraws. He enters the house of his God some of, and some of his own sons while he's worshiping his handmade God, his worldly God. His own kids struck him down dead with a sword. Thus, God, Adonai, delivered Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, close enough, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all. And he helped them <clears throat> in every way and he helped them in every way if God has ever done miracles and wonders and spectacular deliverances he still does today we read in Hebrews that about Jesus Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever what he has done he still can do and will do forever. Let us take courage today in the word of God. Let us take courage in his prophets, primarily the prophets of the Bible speaking of Christ and what is to come. And then secondarily to the prophets of this age who are speaking with the spirit of Christ and encouraging the men and women of God to stand strong, not to yield and go into slavery but to stand strong in the power of the Lord. The chariots of God, in Psalms it's written, are thousands and thousands. My Lord is among them as at Sinai in holiness. You went up on high. You led captivity captive. You received gifts from humanity, even from the rebellious, so that God might dwell there. Blessed be my Lord. Day by day, he bears our burdens, the God of our salvation. Selah, think about that. He bears our burden, the God of our salvation. Let's finish. God is for us, a God of deliverance. Let me read that again. A God of deliverance. God is for you, a God of deliverance not of slavery. And finally, in this passage, Psalm 68, Adonai, my Lord, has escapes from death. Escapes from death, whether it's an escape from poverty or uh, sickness or disease or a bad job or a horrible marriage that uh, there's abuse going on or any horrible situation that's going in. Adonai, my Lord, has escapes from death. There's another scripture. Let me uh, chime, grab over there real quick. It's in Romans chapter uh, 8. And uh, I kind of like this a lot. I like all the scriptures a lot, but... Here we go, 8.32, we'll start, well, 8.31, we'll start with there. And the, the writer writes, What shall then we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him, with Christ, 
with Jesus freely, give us all things. Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one that condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather he who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just, it is, just as it is written in the scriptures, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long, it seems like. We were considered as sleep to be, sheep to be slaughtered. This is the prophets. This is the apostles. This is the men of God through the ages, through the, the, the centuries and the millennia. And the people of God, like sheep led to the slaughter, it seemed like. Yet, he goes on, Romans chapter 8, verse 37. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him, Jesus Christ, who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, in Jesus' name today we pray and thank you for your goodness to this people. Thank you for all who are listening, that your grace is abounding to them today and to their families, that your angels are around them protecting and keeping them, that you're filling their mouth with good so that their youth is renewed like the eagles and that their ears are filled with your word and with encouragement and with pastors and men and women of God and, and fellow sheep who are encouraging one another and saying, I know what it looks like. I know the enemies are out there. I know the surrounding of fear and, and, and depression and despair and ah, what's going to happen. Hey, God's got it. Be courageous. Stand strong. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know this. The one who is with us is much greater than the one that is with your problems. The one that is with us is much more powerful than any and all the hordes of all the entire world combined. They wail and they yell, but praise God. Father, thank you that today you're encouraging your believers. You're encouraging your children because you love them. So I pray that your love uh, just wells up within them and flows out to others and that they receive that love and that Jesus Christ is glorified. And when Jesus Christ is glorified, Father, you are glorified. So we thank you for all of this. And we thank you for all of those who are going to come to Jesus Christ today by faith in his resurrection. Because he was crucified for our sins and resurrected for our life. And he's soon to return. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I bless you people. I bless you all. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's a bit nuts. It seems like the closer you get to God, the more. It's just nuts. Hang in. Victory's here. Victory's already ours. Don't let them try to convince you otherwise. God's good. <laughs>